Hi, I'm Mabel Zhang. Thanks for joining us. ELIZA Corporation is a leading provider of integrated healthcare communication strategies. I'm pleased to welcome Alexandra Drain. She's the founder of ELIZA Corporation. ELIZA, thank welcome. you so much for being here. Great to be here. You've always been very passionate about innovative solutions in the healthcare space. Tell me how it's evolved over the years at ELIZA to meet the changing needs. You know, it's funny. Um, ELIZA is actually my fourth startup in the health technology space, always focused on how do we get the right information to the right person at the right time. And I laugh because as a serial entrepreneur, to now have been at the same company for 12 years is like, oh my God, That's how am I doing that? a long time. It is, until you look at what we've actually done over those 12 years. And the very lucky thing for me about the platform, and also I think our, our management team and our board, is we have really been at least four companies over those 12 years, so really, what I love about the question that you asked is ELIZA itself has changed fundamentally in response to two things, I would say. One, the technology that's available to surround and beguile and really seduce people into taking better care of themselves. And then number two, the data and experience and scars that are available to inform us how should we be using that technology platform to in fact meet people where they are. So when Eliza first got started, we really would have described ourselves as a speech recognition company. We have a proprietary mm -hmm. speech recognition engine that came out of Caltech, and we were very focused on, oh my gosh, we have the best speech recognition engine anywhere. This is amazing. We can reach out to people instead of waiting for them to come to us. The people who we know for the most part are not taking great care of themselves, right? Because they don't come running into the doctor's office. And have a, an interaction with them through a logic tree to hopefully get them to go do something different. How does it work? You're reaching out to people that have not reached out to you. So the original, con original concept for ELIZA was to go to health plans, for example, that had a population of women, let's say, who needed to get a mammogram. And to say to that health plan, well, why don't you work with us, tell us who these people are, and we'll in turn reach out to these women with information about where they can get a mammogram, we'll ask some questions about why they haven't gotten a mammogram, and I think the earliest and most fundamental lesson that we learned as we initiated these first conversations, because they really the technology lets it be a conversation, it's natural language, it doesn't feel like a robocall, thank you very much. 60% of people say at the end of an Eliza call, oh, thank you so much, that was amazing. And what we learned very quickly is just having a great speech recognition engine, if that's all you focus on, then all you do is understand when people say things like, that's none of your business, why are you calling me, I don't even know who this health plan is, you know, so and so has died. And so the very first big adjustment Eliza made after coming out as an amazing speech recognition company was to start madly redefining ourselves as an interaction company with an interaction design team that knew how to harness the power of this technology. So when you reached out to somebody with this technology that could talk to them and understand their response, you did it respectfully. You did it authentically. You did it in a way that made them want to interact, not just once, but over time. And I think that's a key aspect of ELIZA that we learned 12 years ago that we have just continued to build on over the past 12 years. So what happens to the information after people have answered the questions um, using this software and then uh, they have finished the call and then what happens? So all sorts of things. In the immediate interaction, which may be let's use a phone call, it could be an email, it could be a texting thing, but let's use a phone call. Um, we might get, let's stay with the mammogram example, we might get the woman on the phone, she lets us know that she has not gotten a mammogram, she's not planning to because she doesn't know any radiology clinics that are close to her. So we say, oh, well we actually can email you a list of radiology clinics right now that are right near you, would you like me to do that? She says, yes, we say, great, give me your email address. We're then going to send her a follow-up email after the fact, and we've captured the email that we can be using for other things as well. We might also go on to screen her for depression. You know, one of the biggest surprises to me in an ELISA program was one of our customers said, there's, you know, a lot of women struggle with feeling blue, and I want you to add a depression screener to this outreach to a general female population, not a population that we have reason to believe is blue, but just this population as high as 15% of that population screened positive for depression. So what Eliza could do in that second is hold on to that woman, quickly check through web services to see if this woman has a behavioral health benefit. If she does, we might stay with her and say, you know what, we've got someone who can talk to you right now. Will you wait one minute? And then transfer her through to someone who can work with her in the moment that the door is open. Very now, cool. All of this data is captured. We're also ca capturing other information about preferences, how people like to receive information, their motivation, their styles. 
All of this is being put into Eliza's database and we share this back with our partners after in ways that can create indices of things like engagement, for example. Are you finding that people are more accepting of this because your program is so great or because people are just more and more accustomed to speaking to automated uh, messaging, messaging machines now? You know, we, I think I could answer that a couple different ways. The best way to answer it is we have not fundamentally seen large shifts positively or negative. Our engagement levels, which pretty much match those of live humans, have stayed the same for the most part over the past 12 years. I think initially that was because our interactions were so lifelike that people thought it was a human, and so they stayed with us. I think over time, there's definitely more awareness that this is an automated interaction, but because it is full of joy, usually full of soul, we do a very, we don't do academic, condescending, paternalistic interactions. We do, we think shoulder to shoulder, inclusive, we're in this together, and folks end up staying with us throughout. And who do you use to help you determine what tone of voice to use, or what sort of responses are, are much more favorable than others? Yes. How do you go oh, about doing all God. of that? So I will first tell you that we actually have patents on things like intonation and voice because it matters so much. And we've seen examples that if you just record it this way or that way, just the freight, the tone, not forget the words, you can swing something from 20% to 80%. This stuff really, really matters. The team that we use is homegrown at Eliza because anytime we tried to farm it out, we couldn't get the same results. And I would say it's a combination of it, really, the base of it is an unbelievable business intelligence platform that lets us mine through to see what's working for who. But you have to overlay on top of the creativity to say, we're going to try this approach because it builds on something that we saw and learned. And the last thing I'll say is when we hire people for our interaction design team, we never hire people who've been trained in traditional communications for healthcare because they absolutely do not have approaches that appear to work through us. We, try, we hire people who are actors, people who are um, poets, people who have written for um, TV shows, people who are concierges at hotels. This is sort of the, the skill set that we've seen over time creates the most value at Eliza. Alexandra Drain, thank you so much. Thank you so much. A Appreciate pleasure to it. meet you. I'm Mabel Jong. Thanks for watching.